In just the past 10 years, more than 198 million pounds of oil, the equivalent of 15 Giza pyramids if filled with crude, have spilled into the oceans, and most of it is lost forever, never to be recovered. The result? Coral reefs turned to stone, mass die-offs of sea turtles, and fish vanishing from once thriving waters. But in the Philippines, a group of environmental engineers made a surprising and controversial decision to dump thousands of tons of agricultural waste into the sea. Shockingly, the United Nations didn't object. Instead, it called this humanity's greenest solution. What was it? How did it change our perception of what waste really is? Let's find out in detail right now. On August 11, 2006, the oil tanker MT Solar One, leased by Petron Corporation, the largest fuel distributor in the Philippines, sank to a depth of 3,000 feet in the open sea due to overloading and old age. Worse than the sinking itself was its cargo, 550,000 gallons of bunker oil, a thick, heavy, and toxic fuel, enough to fill 840 backyard swimming pools. It quickly became the worst oil spill in Philippine history. In the days that followed, Gumaris, the island closest to the disaster, once famous for its white beaches, sweet mangoes, and the Taklong Marine Reserve, turned into an environmental disaster zone. Oil covered over 3,700 acres of ecosystem, devastating mangrove forests, seagrass beds, and suffocating coral reefs right in spawning season. Of all the affected places, Taklong Island suffered the worst. On top of that, with water sources heavily polluted, authorities ordered a complete halt to fishing. 20,000 fishermen lost their livelihoods. Many had to leave for Manila to find work, and children dropped out of school because families could no longer afford tuition. Tourism, once the backbone of the local economy, completely collapsed, causing losses estimated in the billions of pesos. Even though the Philippines immediately deployed all international standard oil spill response procedures, Floating barriers, oil containment, mechanical skimming, absorbent materials, and dealing with toxic sediment, these seemingly professional methods proved almost useless against the thick bunker oil. This heavy, tar-like oil didn't spread everywhere, but instead clumped up, sticking to rocks, mangrove roots, and even mixing right into the sand. Guimaras was especially hard to save. The Taklong Reserve is far from the mainland with narrow roads, making heavy machinery only a plan on paper. There were no specialized American or European cleanup ships, no high-capacity skimmers, so the Philippines was forced to do something that sounded almost like a cruel joke in a national disaster. Cleaning up the oil by hand, using the bare hands of poor locals, the Philippines needed a more effective solution. What surprised us and everyone else was that they actually used human hair. Yes, real human hair. Thousands of salons from Manila to Cebu set up hair collection bins and college students lined up to cut their hair for donation. The hair was stuffed into nylon nets to create massive floating booms, each stretching dozens of yards, laid out along the Gamara's coastline. But why hair? It's not random. Scientifically, human hair has a very unique property. It loves oil but repels water. Each strand acts like a natural capillary tube able to cling to and hold oil along its entire surface without swelling up like synthetic sponges. Because it's lightweight and floats, hair is one of the rare natural materials that can sit on the ocean surface for hours and keep absorbing oil. In fact, the Philippines wasn't the first to come up with this idea. During the Costco Busan oil spill in San Francisco Bay in 2007, hair mats proved capable of absorbing up to one and a half gallons of oil per pound of hair. In Mayas, when an oil tanker was punctured, locals held a mass haircut event. The results stunned the world. 25,000 pounds of hair could soak up 170,000 gallons of crude oil. But as effective as it was, the hair solution wasn't perfect. Hair decomposes extremely slowly if left in the environment. Plus, salon hair can contain dyes and chemicals that shouldn't touch marine ecosystems. So, a better solution was needed. But this wasn't the last time plants, or plant-like materials, would be used in the fight against oil pollution. 17 years after the MT Solar One disaster in July 2023, 
a ship carrying 370,000 gallons of industrial fuel capsized off the coast of Bataan, threatening fish farms and coastal communities. Once again, the sea changed color in just a few hours, but this time, the Philippine Coast Guard didn't choose hair, nor did they wait for foreign equipment. They immediately dragged sacks of dried coconut husks to the shoreline, tied them into long boom sections, and released them into the water. Interestingly, this wasn't improvised. A few months earlier, when an oil tanker sank near eastern Mindoro, locals had gathered coconut husks from around the village, stuffed them into nets, and created highly effective homemade oil-absorbing floats. At first, people imagined half coconuts bobbing around like fishing buoys, but the real material used was coconut choir, a fibrous product separated from the coconut husk during rope making. Choir is lightweight, absorbs oil well, is cheap, and is available everywhere coconuts are grown in the Philippines. What few people mention is that the Philippines was once the world's top coconut producer and still ranks among the leaders. 26% of farmers rely on coconuts, and the country produces millions of tons of unused coconut husks each year. Not just the Philippines, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, India, and Vietnam all have so much extra coconut husk that 85 to 90% of the world's choir is wasted. Meanwhile, every other part of the coconut is used. The water for drinking, the meat for eating, the trunk for wood, the leaves for roofing the oil for cosmetics, only the husk, making up 35% of the fruit's weight, was treated as trash. But history shows coconut husk was never truly useless. During World War II, American and British armies used coconut fiber to make life jackets, ship anchor nets, and camouflage nets. They called it the golden fiber of the Pacific because choir is durable, light, floats well, and doesn't rot in seawater. Today, modern science has found coconut choir to be even stronger than previously thought. Choir contains 45% lignin, the highest in the plant world, a kind of bio-glue that powerfully attracts oil. Its spongy, twisted fiber structure with millions of microcapillaries lets it absorb not just crude oil but also heavy metals like lead, copper, and chromium. That's why coir is now used to make erosion control mats in the United States and Canada, hydroponic substrates in Europe, soundproofing in recording studios, interior materials, and even car seat cushions for Mercedes-Benz. Surprised by what coconut husk can do? But its most revolutionary use is in the marine environment. When scientists re-examined coconut choir, they were shocked. 45% of its structure is lignin, the highest among all plants. Lignin is a natural oil magnet. Unlike sponges or straw, coir is totally oil-loving and water-repellent, meaning even after soaking for a week, it still floats and still absorbs oil. A 2017 experiment in Malaysia showed coir held oil for 72 hours straight. In Thailand in 2021, coir absorbed 30 times more oil than straw. These numbers have made many countries rethink their entire oil spill response strategy. The mechanism is almost unbelievably simple. When oil spills, people scatter choir fiber to create floating barriers, while choir pith absorbs oil super fast. Afterward, you just gather it up, squeeze out the oil for recycling, and the cleaned choir can be reused or turned into compost, bio bricks, or building materials. Far superior to plastic booms that cause microplastics, coconut choir is 20 to 30 times cheaper fully biodegradable, and can be reused many times by squeezing out the oil and using it again. After each use, choir can be turned into bio bricks, compost, building materials, or bioenergy. If you're still skeptical about coconut husk, just look at how advanced countries are using it. Activated carbon made from coconut husk, with its vast surface area and dense honeycomb-like network of microcapillaries, is now the gold standard for water purification in Japan and Singapore. These tiny carbon grains can trap heavy metals, mercury, arsenic, pesticides, and even toxic organic compounds. Even more important, since the world started paying attention to the coconut weapon, local economies have boomed exponentially. The price of choir in the Philippines has tripled, Indonesia has built five new choir processing plants just for bio-boom production 
and Sri Lanka exports thousands of tons of choir to the European Union. By 2024, the United Nations officially recognized coconut choir as the most effective biodegradable oil absorbent humanity has. While the world is cheering for green solutions like coconut choir, a harsh reality is quietly resurfacing. Global oil spills are on the rise again. In 2024 alone, there were six major and four moderate spills, totaling nearly 22 million pounds of oil dumped into the sea. Is that less than the peak years of the 1980s and 1990s? Yes. Most of these spills now happen in South America, Asia, and Europe. Where dense shipping lanes cross, more worrying? The average for the 2020s is 7.4 spills per year, higher than the 2010s. So even with more modern ships, people are not any safer. The reason? It's obvious. Bigger ships, more extreme weather, and a boom in global shipping. A tropical storm just 15 to 20% stronger can take down even the largest cargo vessels. The consequences come faster than anyone expects. NOAA research shows that a coral reef covered in oil can take 10 to 20 years to recover, if it survives at all. In Brazil in 2019, a mysterious oil spill blackened 1,860 miles of coastline, suffocating thousands of baby sea turtles as oil clogged their breathing. In Thailand, the 2022 Rayong oil spill triggered toxic algae blooms due to a mix of oil, strong sunlight, and microbial imbalance, creating dead zones where no fish survived. The most dangerous fact, only 20 to 30% of spilled oil is ever recovered. The rest quietly sinks to the bottom, lying in ocean mud for 10 to 40 years, like an ecological time bomb waiting to go off. In this context, finding new solutions that are cheap, fast, and safe is no longer a choice, but a survival race for the oceans. At Argonne National Laboratory, American scientists have created Oleo Sponge, a high-tech sponge that can soak up 90 times its weight in oil and be reused indefinitely by simply squeezing out the oil and dropping it back in the water. Its secret is sequential infiltration synthesis, a process where each polyurethane strand is coated with oil-loving molecules, so it recognizes oil and ignores water. Oleo Sponge quickly became the gold standard for oil spill research, hailed as a breakthrough far beyond any existing technology. But the trade-off? It's expensive, complex to produce, and nearly impossible to deploy immediately in remote islands like the Philippines. Meanwhile, at MIT, another team is dreaming of a robotic swarm to sweep up oil spills at sea. The Sea Swarm robot, powered by solar panels, can work for weeks, carrying oil weighing 20 times its own weight and moves like a conveyor belt collecting oil. Its design is especially effective in narrow waters, river deltas, or places where large machines can't go. But here's the tough reality. More than 10 years after its debut, Sea Swarm has yet to appear in any real disaster. The technology is too new, costly, hard to deploy, and the ocean waits for no one. Off the coast of Canada, another revolution is happening. The high-speed skimmer ships from Extreme Spill Technology were developed to tackle conditions that defeated older equipment, waves over 10 feet, strong winds, thick oil. In tests with the Canadian Coast Guard, they recovered oil at record speed, prompting the Canadian government to immediately spend $9.5 million to buy a fleet. Traditional skimmers are limited, ineffective in big waves, nearly useless at night due to poor visibility and prone to clogging. But EST's vessels are like battleships built for chaos. But did you know? While the rest of the world is fighting oil spills, Norway, one of the greenest countries on Earth, does the exact opposite. It intentionally pours oil into the sea every year. Sounds like an environmental crime, but it's actually one of the reasons Norway is the world's fastest oil spill responder. You need to know that Norway's oil industry isn't just big, it's the backbone of their economy. In 2023, Norway was the world's 11th largest oil producer, and oil revenues made up nearly 30% of its government budget. If your country lives off oil, you also face the risk of major spills, and you can't afford to make mistakes. That's why, since the 1980s, Norway has held real-world oil spill drills called oil-on-water exercises. Not simulations. Real oil is released into the sea, 
strictly regulated by law for training purposes. The organization behind this is the Norwegian Clean Seas Association for Operating Companies, responsible for keeping the entire oil industry at peak readiness. Each year, Norway runs hundreds of land-based drills, but the at-sea exercises are the heart of the system. Rescue ships, surveillance planes, high-capacity skimmers, and new tech are all tested in real conditions. Waves, wind, currents, and real oil. In 2015, even NASA joined in to test aerial oil monitoring sensors. The result? Norway is almost unbeatable. Fastest response times, highest tech mastery, and nearly zero mistakes. Looking back at the whole journey, from the MT Solar One disaster to Filipino farmers bending over to collect sacks of coconut coir, we see a profound truth. The ocean isn't just saved by billion dollar technology, solar robots, or nano sponges. Sometimes the simplest materials, discarded for decades, become humanity's most powerful biological weapon. The story of the coconut is also the story of humanity. When nature is wounded, it's nature itself that offers the cure. If you believe the future of oil spill response needs both high-tech and local wisdom, let me know in the comments. And if you want more strange stories, shocking facts, and unbelievable but real solutions, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss our next adventure.